We started skiing as a family in 1955 and we hired gear at Coronet Peak, then came back in 56 and that's when I got my first pair of wooden skis. Notice the rat trap bindings. When you strap yourself in, you had a safety strap on so your ski didn't, doesn't take off down the mountain. But the big thing you'll notice is how long they were. They were parallel type skis and these are 210 centimetres. They used to take the height of the ski as being up to your, about your wrist level. These New Zealand ski yearbooks, they were bought out every year and I've got every one from 1952 to 1970. Prior to 1946-47, around about that time, there was nothing formally going on in this area and it needed a second season and you've got to admire the vision that Harry Wigley had. Between the long lake and the hills, Queenstown, take the road to Coronet Peak for winter skiing. When you look back, you know, the Mount Cook Group and Harry Wigley virtually transformed Queenstown. They had the coaches coming in from 1964 on, they had the airline service coming in. There'd always been light general aviation here before, but nothing linking the, the main centres with the town. This is there when I was a ski instructor in 1964. In the early days, of course, just staying on your skis was <laughs> typical for a start. So we were teaching people how to put their gear on, stand on their skis to be able to do a, a, a little traverse across the slope. Probably the biggest event in the early days was 1964 when the Pomogowski uh, lift. It was a double lift. It was a fixed fixed lift, so it came around the ball wheel pretty quick and you had to be pretty smart getting onto it. But uh, it was a huge difference to the old rope toe and of course it went direct to the top of the mountain, which was a big improvement. Les and Doug Bruff, and they, were, they were stalwarts, the very good mountaineers from Dunedin, but they were regulars up here. But the Bruff boys then ended up working for the company for many years and they were involved with actually the actual installation of that lift. Sugar Robinson was virtually the, the go-to man that Harry had here. If things had to be done, he got them done. And, and he was sort of one of those original number eight wire men. The Sarah Sue run was la named after Sugar's wife and, uh, and his daughter, I think. And then, of course, Arnold Ivers, who was, a, who was a great stalwart. He's got a run up there, Arnold's Way. People would, probably don't realise the significance of some of these runs that were some of the personalities of the time. I joined the company in late 88 running the uh, flight seeing side of things. And originally I was only going to come for a year. They asked me to stay on permanent staff and be regional manager and that morphed into regional manager of South Island. So it was actually a, a really interesting job because you'd be talking with people about ski areas one minute and buses then airline and flight seeing and helicopters would be the most stimulating 12 years I've ever had in my life actually. This is the jacket from the early 1990s. Still got the old company logo on. In the early to mid 90s, the company decided they had to upgrade the main lift because the growth of it had been phenomenal, especially with the overseas tourists coming in. And a four seat high speed detachable was put in. Uh, it was an Austrian lift. We managed to get it past the board only because of the fact that we, we put in snow making equipment as well to guarantee the product. The Queenstown Winter Festival. The Winter Festival was a tremendous kickstart for the season. It had some great events in it and got good TV coverage. We'd get, we'd get a few personalities down here. People had a, had a lot of fun and, and it sort of revved things up for the winter. <laughs> yeah, picnic bar from last season. I forgot they've still got it in there. As I look back over 75 years, I've seen tremendous development. For example, the, the new facilities, the new, the new base building, the huge investment that's gone in, in, in more recent times with Sir John Davies has put in for the operation. A really nice sealed road compared with the boggy road we had from the skippers up to the, from the base build. And I can remember in heavy snows in the early days having to help carry the food up to the Pie Palace, as we called it, the place where we used to get our food. And the easy access to Queenstown is the big thing about it. You know, if a person with a private car can leave their hotel and 20, 25 minutes later, they, they can be clipping on those boards and, and uh, skiing onto a lift. That's pretty good. I still look forward to going skiing. One of the things, the advantage at my age, I actually get a free ski pass, so there's a hell of a good incentive. <laughs>